Welcome to part two of my conversation with Kelly McGuire, Senior Vice President of Revenue Management at MGM Resorts International. If you missed part one, click on the link below. In this part, Kelly and I are talking about MGM's exciting transformation into an entertainment company and how that allows her to innovate in revenue management and pricing as well. One of the reasons why I got so excited about this problem and this opportunity at MGM is, is a lot about um, the, the critical mass of properties we have here, but the kind of how we're diversifying ourselves as an organization. So m morphing from being a casino company, a gaming company, a hospitality company, yeah. to really being an entertainment company. Yeah. And um, our tagline, uh, I don't know how we get added on this, right, is that we're in the whole <laughs> right? Now Klaus and I can see the fountain, so hopefully we'll show you those later, but you know, it, there's a lot of that right, right here. Right. Um, but that's really fun because we've got this beautiful product and all these unique experiences. But as a data geek, you know, what can we do to package right. all that and really create your perfect Vegas experience, your perfect Macau experience, yeah. your perfect National Harbor experience? There is a recognition, and this is what's kind of um, interesting about you know the casino business, but MGM in general too. We've got all these great facilities. We've got amazing assets. We like you said, we've got entertainment, food and beverage, retail, golf. We've got everything, right? But there's a recognition that it's all driven by who we put in the rooms. Right. And so right. that decision, um, um, how we utilize our capacity constrained inventory is key to the whole puzzle. Kelly is making a few key points here. One, MGM is changing. It is no longer just about casinos or hotels. It is about the experience. That means it is critical to think about how to package and price the entire journey. The most critical statement, it is all driven by making sure we put the right person in the room. She explains next what that means. When we think about sort of the en enterprise level revenue management here, it does start with, do we know how the mix we put in the building is going to use the building? Is that the best use right, right. of the building right. facilities? Right. Um, so you're really looking at the asset, right? Yeah. Asset as asset value or asset yeah. revenue or profit per yeah. revenue per square foot. To Not that, that we're sound, right? necessarily measuring on that, but right. it's more like that, right? Um, yeah. And our RevPAR figure, while we do track it and we get measured on it, um, means a lot less because some of it's kind of funny money, right? There's yeah. a, you yeah. comp a room, there's a, there's a comp yeah. rate yeah, associated sure. with it. Sure. But that gamer's brought in thousands more somewhere else. Right? Looking at the mix of business and how it impacts the enterprise as a whole, not just rooms, is the foundation for MGM. Casino companies have traditionally traded off room revenue in return for other, more profitable revenue opportunities. MGM likes to take it to an entirely new level, but it is a long journey. What has been interesting for the entire Vegas market is the balance between non-gaming and gaming and how do you start to incorporate more of that and how do you start to get more of that mm -hmm. richness of data. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, we have some advantages there, but I, I, honestly, everyone could do better with that. Yeah, yeah. And everyone needs to get creative and finding ways to uh, to make sure that you're you really do have an understanding of yeah. you know, the, the profile of a profitable customer, right. or a profitable mix, right? And right. to me, that's even, you know, get to that level of mix. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter who you are, who I am, but what are we associated with and what kind of, you know, you can start there and then right. let marketing right. manipulate while we, you know, Klaus will come now, Kelly's gonna yeah. come later kind of a thing. When we talk about profitable mix and experience-led packaging, we naturally started to talk about how the industry is moving towards a more attribute or customer choice based selling methodology, which obviously plays well with an entertainment company like MGM. Yeah. I think we do need to get into a little bit of flexibility to really figure out the value associated with, mm -hmm. with some of these attributes, which, and I kind of like the way you put that, which really is packages as an experience. Right. So we do have the best views of the fountain on the strip right <laughs> of here at Bellagio. You do. Because um, you own the fountain. Well, we own the fountain, and plus, right. I mean, you can turn the TV on and hear the soundtrack from your room, and any of these other guys don't have that because okay. they won't even let you open a window. <clears throat> so, um, which they shouldn't. Just say <laughs> different, um, different conversation. Different conversation, <laughs> but we'll move on. Right. Um, so, so, but that is that. So, what about this? What about the attributes of the product? And that could include a definition that's a little bit past where we have traditionally boxed it, yep. right? Um, drives value for the consumer and how do we price appropriately. Yeah. Kelly has done a lot of research on consumer perception of revenue management. She's very mindful that whatever is being done must be perceived as fair to the guest. Consumer perceptions of fairness have huge implications on the revenue management yeah. decision. Yeah. So I think where you wound up with that 
is probably the way that this gets executed. So I think we have to be careful. I think we can price on experience, we can price on attributes, we can price based on demand, all of these things, as long as it doesn't look like we're discriminating customer to customer. Yeah. So that we have to be very careful as we evolve into this kind of into this kind of methodology, which is super exciting and I think really important. And I think we have to, you know, it stretches the bounds of how we think about valuing our product. Right. right. But within that, there has to be a discipline to say, it isn't customer-centric pricing. It's mm. not Klaus's price, Kelly's right. price. Right, right. It's the price for the product or the experience. Yep. Um, and of course, we're using input from you, me, and everybody else who's, yep. who shopped for it, looked for it, whatever price sensitivity. But no matter who wants it, they can have it at exactly the same price yep. as each other. I call it customer choice pricing yeah. because you're, you're really giving the consumer the choice. Mm. And then it's up to you to, to, to pick it or don't pick it. But if we're going right. to be successful with that, you do have to tease out sort of the value associated with every piece of that puzzle. Yep. And, you know, it is about the room type and view, and it's about the location, and it's about what gets bundled with that experience. So right. if you want to have uh, access to great restaurants like this, or do you <laughs> want to go across the street where I'm sure they have fine places to eat? Right. It's not just about, okay, this is my, you know, high floor suite with a view, but it really is. Um, is it the view ma that matters or the high floor that matters or mm -hmm. the suite that matters? Mm -hmm. And is it, what's the combination of those things? Mm -hmm. And we haven't really thought about our product like taken apart like that. Nope. So I think what's interesting about this, this sort of experience-based pricing is, you know, to do it right, we're going to have to understand things at a much more granular level than we ever Absolutely. have before. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that is cool and really interesting. Right. And you want to talk about a data challenge? <laughs> we're going to have to put a lot of pressure on our selling system friends to be able to deliver us the data in that format and then yeah. execute the selling yeah. strategy. But honestly, that is the future because everybody else is going to be doing that to the extent yeah. that they are, right? Yeah. What a fascinating conversation with Kelly. We agreed that giving customers more choice and unbundling the experience is cool. It's interesting and it is the future. But it's also challenging from a data perspective and from a perceived fairness perspective. And while we're on the subject of cool, of course we had to talk about voice enabled assistants, Alexa, Google, and how they will impact the industry going forward. I saw some of the digital assistants demoed. Um, you know, Google has one talking to brands and mm. Alexa and all that. But this, mm. this to me is where it starts to get interesting, right? Yes. If, you, if you as a brand can develop your voice through these channels and yep. talk back to the consumers yep. and know what questions to anticipate. So, I yep. mean, we've got a big complex product here too. We've got 12 properties on the strip, 40,000 rooms. Mm. So, you know, I can I can envision a future where somebody is like, you know, okay, Google, talk to MGM, and here we come. Right. right. Next. Right. All right, so I want to come in June. Great. What, you know, where do you want to stay? Do you do you like, you know... What do you like? Yeah. Fountain View or not? we right. got this event coming up. You want to be near that? Do you like, you know, I mean, there's just, there's so many, you know, so yeah. many possibilities yeah. if you can, if you can have that conversation. Now, listen, this also reminds me of the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Because despite how things have evolved, consistently, that voice channel, right, the call center is still higher revenue per, you know, its share of our business, right? right? They consistently, right. why? Because you got, if you've got the right people, yeah. you've got someone on the other end that's selling. Well, you have an opportunity to sell, yeah, Opportunity absolutely. to sell. We've right. tried to replicate that in the digital environment with, you know, with the, through the web pages. We're not great at that, but this digital assistant is now another opportunity. So yeah. can we get better at that interaction? Yeah. So not, like to your point, asking for the experience, but then let's probe a little bit deeper because right. you didn't just mean you wanted an Eiffel Tower view. There's more, right? Yeah. There's more that you wanted Yeah, there. what's the occasion or, you yeah. know, anything. Somebody else I was talking to last week, he said, actually, you could you could filter it by how much you want to pay for your Uber. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> good You know, point, you want to stay right? within 25 that bucks, that right? That, that data <laughs> ought to be there too. Like, you know, or just remind you, okay, if, 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 if you're paying this for the room, your your transportation costs are the crap right. you want to see is right. if you want to hire. I and love that's, that. that's easy data, right? Yeah. You could say, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to stay within $25 Uber ride, right? To oh go God. to work, yeah, right? That's pretty good. <laughs> See, it's staggering now. We're going to have to price considering all this other data. No, stay with the basics, though. Let's just get that right, and then you can build from there. But that has always been my philosophy. This yeah. stuff is cool. No. We got to stick, we got to remember sure. the foundation needs to be laid, the discipline needs to be there, the mindset needs to be there. And then with every step, you think about where's the value of knowing your radius, where's, right. your, where's the value of measuring in feet the distance yeah. from the coolest coffee shop, like whatever it is, right? <laughs> It comes back to that for me always, right? Mm. Is we have all this potential data we can use. We have all these ways that we can create an experience and it's easy to get distracted. 
And when you get distracted, you're either down a rabbit hole of something that isn't gonna add value, or you are, um, you're gonna get back to what we talked about at the beginning, which is you're waiting now for the perfect thing to be created, mm. and you lose sight of the incremental steps in between. Yeah. So I still, you know, with all this opportunity, not to be like Debbie Downer on this fun conversation, but we've got to, we, it's more important than ever before to stay disciplined, especially us revenue and data people, right? Stay right. disciplined right. with, okay, what's the value that this is adding? What's the, what's the incremental we're gonna get? What, how will, how, what's the so what? How's this gonna change our decision making? Um, and look, that's not, a, that's not a big overhead on this. It's just, it's a check to the creativity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, just saying, and then how do we, if we say our ultimate vision is this, yeah. what are the how steps we we're gonna there? take to right. get there? Right. And uh, planning for that now. Um, because by the way, every time we wait around, like figure some stuff out, e-commerce, social media, all this other stuff, they ate our lunch. So if we think that's where we're going, <laughs> like, let's get on they're that today that. so they're that no ready. one's eating our lunch. They're probably right. already trying to. Right. This time maybe, you know, we could keep right. our lunch. I want hotels to eat everyone else's lunch for once. Kelly is absolutely right. We all get easily distracted. Let's make sure we stay disciplined. We have the foundation right, get the right data, make sure our processes are sound, and then let's innovate from here. I feel Kelly is putting all the right pieces in place to make sure nobody eats MGM's lunch anytime soon. And I'm looking forward to a follow-up unconstrained conversation with her to see how she's doing.